and carving away with reckless abandon. It's not that reckless. I sort of know what I'm doing, and then again, I sort of don't. You get into the zone. You don't even have to think about what you're doing. Sometimes you just keep doing it. It's almost as though, once again, almost as though I'm not the one who's really creating this, at least not entirely. So you want to know what I want to, what I do when I want to carve out the bowl of the spoon. Well, this is where it gets tedious. Because what you want to do is sort of trace out where you want it to be. Maybe more like this. Maybe bigger. And then you actually have to start digging in. Digging in. And digging in. And it's different than carving around the edge of something because for one thing, it's easy to cut too deep, eventually, <laughs> and you're left with little marks inside the bowl of your spoon that you can't get rid of unless you carve out yet more material. Now eventually, eventually I'll switch to a pocket knife, it has a curved edge on the blade, you know, down at the bottom of the blade it's curved not pointed like this and that'll make it easier to do curves in the wood without scoring little scratches. At least not as much. There you go, it's a start. Very shallow start to one One of the bowls is going to be in this piece of utensil art. I, I call it utensil art because spoon carving is very far from what I do. Traditional spoon carving involves spoons that could theoretically be used, more often just displayed as some kind of folk art. The handles that are carved in certain patterns to me, it's just not, uh, it's not art, it's a craft, it's not art, mine are conceptual pieces and your utensils only in the conceptual sense, yeah some of them can be used, it is true, and yes I do use olive oil, food safe and all that, theoretically you could use them some of them. But that's just part of the concept. It takes forever. If I get this done within a year, I'll be amazed. <laughs>